Garuda Indonesia. This name might not command the same global recognition as giants like Air France or Lufthansa, but this national flag carrier of Indonesia, in my book, secures a spot in my favorite top five first class experiences. Welcome aboard my fellow travel enthusiasts. Buckle up and get ready to hear why this hidden gem in the world of high-end air travel easily ranks among my top five. After the COVID pandemic, Garuda Indonesia limited its first class service to just one route, operating exclusively between Jakarta and Amsterdam. That too, just once a week. Recently, Air France and KLM made it possible to book this first class seat using Flying Blue Miles. The redemption was not cheap though. It was a whopping 275,000 Flying Blue Miles. For comparison's sake, a first class flight in Lufthansa can be booked for 100,000 aeroplan points. A first class ticket on British Airways can be booked for 85,000 American Advantage miles. And a first class ticket on Emirates between Dubai and Los Angeles can be booked for only 186,000 Skywards miles. So yes, this was a pretty high redemption rate, but I still decided to do it. After booking, I received a very polite email from Garuda Indonesia confirming my first class ticket and offering an array of personalized services. I positioned myself in Jakarta and stayed for a couple of days at the St. Regis. I had to check out at 4 p.m. so I had requested to be picked up at the hotel around 4.30 p.m. even though my flight was only at 11.30 at night. A Toyota Alphard picked me up precisely at 4.30 and whisked me off to the airport. A personal escort greeted me at the curbside in Terminal 3 and walked me to the first class check-in area. As I lounged in the comfortable sofas, my escort handled the check-in process and presented me with my boarding pass and passport. We then proceeded to expedited immigration and security which only took about 5 minutes and we were well on our way to the first class lounge. The first class lounge is separate from the business class lounge and was impressively spacious especially considering once a week frequency first class flights. The focal point of the lounge was an ornate mythical Garuda bird sculpture behind a grand piano. There were two special completely enclosed VIP rooms and I was seated in one of them. The lounge attendant greeted me with a tray of fresh fruits and water. The reminder of the first class lounge was adorned with numerous small booths, each uniquely furnished and equipped with a flat screen TV. So if you're a group of three or four, you could easily occupy one of those booths and still have privacy from the rest of the people in the first class lounge. There were plenty of beautifully set up dining tables, but there were just two of us enjoying everything this lounge had to offer. When it was time for dinner, I asked for the menu, but sadly they didn't have one. Instead, the lounge attendant verbally communicated the food options and brought all the wine bottles for me to choose from. I got a soup, Indonesian style fried rice, and chicken satay with peanut sauce. I couldn't tell you the actual Indonesian names of these dishes, but they were tasty and well presented. I finished my first dinner with a cup of espresso. Overall, the first class lounge was a haven of luxury where every detail was thoughtfully curated to elevate the first class experience. My escort arrived before boarding and we walked over to the gate. The plane was a 9-year-old Boeing 777-300ER. My first impression about entering the plane was, this looks outstanding. The cabin was a symphony of bright, inviting colors and clean lines, creating an ambiance that's both warm and sophisticated. The first class was so immaculate that it defied the plane's age. This was a stark contrast to my initial impression of the Air France La Première cabin where I found the cabin to be dull and uninviting. If you want to see my Air France La Première cabin review, take a look at this link. My lounge escort handed me off to one of the cabin crew who walked me to my seat. The first class seat is a fully enclosed suite with doors. The seat itself was larger and wider with decent amount of storage space. And I really appreciated the initial tour that my flight attendant gave me. We have some eye mask, eye brush, some color bar, and toothbrush as well. We have some saddles, we have some other list of the drink. We have some dandelion. This is our service for today's one. So we have some microphone video, complete with pen and mono phone. 
Philippines and we only prepare your today's magazine with the name under magazine we also have the on launch clothing equal steel water mm -hmm. and the most important is your it's the same mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. and also the features of your seat you have to recline do not disturb and like this is your motor for infotainment so yeah. we have some mate de juices is it the passion fruit mixed with tamaril fruit with the macadamia nuts and hot power please once you settle down in your seat for a 14 hour long journey what's the first thing you'll do take off your shoes right the FA somehow magically knew I was looking for them. She approached me with beautifully crafted, high-quality slippers, positioned a red towel beneath my feet before placing the in-flight slippers on it. Once I switched into comfortable slippers, she took away my shoes, covered them with the same red towel, and assured me they would be returned back to me as we neared landing. It's a little detail, but it was the level of hospitality that actually made me feel like royalty. We pushed back 15 minutes later into the Indonesian skies. We're destroying the smoke detector in the lavatory, and smoking in the lavatory is In-flight service began immediately after takeoff and started with some vintage champagne and caviar service. That's right, what's first class without caviar? I also had a couple of Indonesian signature non-alcoholic drinks. One was called Marti Bay and a green drink called Mung Bean Juice. They both were delicious and refreshing. These beverages weren't even listed on the menu, but the crew noticed my interest in trying Indonesian items and thoughtfully presented these special drinks. The table was set for dinner. If you have seen my Air India first class video, you'll recall my concern about the table possibly snapping in half during turbulence. Well, this table was the complete opposite. It was very sturdy, thick, robust and quite elegant. Garuda Indonesia enhances the first class experience by having an in-flight chef dedicated to catering to passengers. The chef personally introduced himself, elaborated on each menu item and took orders. I treated myself to Soto Padang, a delightful beef soup, a beef rendang with turmeric rice for my main course. By this point, I was so full and I had to defer my dessert to a later time. I proceeded to the restroom to change into pajamas and they happen to be some of the softest in-flight pajamas I've ever experienced and I'm ranking them on par with Etihad's first class PJs. The restroom was small but clean and well stocked. Cloth towels instead of paper towels was a nice touch. When I got back to my seat, I noticed the flight attendant had made my bed. The thick mattress pad and the cozy comforter transformed the plane seat into the most comfortable bed. Once the tall cabin doors were shut, it felt as though I was soaring through the skies in a private jet. I had a very restful and enjoyable sleep. Well, let's just say the few glasses of champagne I downed earlier played a small role in facilitating that peaceful sleep. I woke up a few hours later and went to the restroom and then when I returned back to my seat, I noticed my bed was made again. This is some next level service. Was it necessary? Absolutely not. But this just shows the cabin crew's exceptional dedication to passenger comfort and satisfaction. The FA comes back to my seat and asks if I'd be interested in a soothing tea accompanied by light snacks or perhaps some chocolate. Who am I to decline such an offer? So another light meal between naps it is.
Breakfast was served before landing and I chose a fruit platter with cereal and yogurt. They were accompanied by some of the freshest pastries I've ever had in the sky. I didn't request but the chef prepared some blueberry pancakes and a side of bacon as well for me. There were some pretty good Indonesian coffees that I got to try thanks to the flight attendants. My shoes were brought as promised and once I changed I was given small bags to take the slippers home. I gladly decided to take them home as a souvenir. Here's a quiz for you. Which airline won the Skytrax award for the world's best airline cabin crew 2023? Take a guess. Did you also know that they are winning this award for the sixth time? I am not surprised at all. It's a well-earned recognition of their exceptional dedication to passenger comfort and satisfaction. I can confidently say Garuda Indonesia's hospitality is renowned for its warmth, friendliness, and genuine care for guests. It reflects the cultural values of respect and kindness, creating an atmosphere that goes beyond mere service. From genuine smiles to a willingness to assist, Indonesian hospitality often leaves a lasting impression on visitors in making them feel welcomed. Just as I began to think that this incredible first-class service was about to come to an end, the reality of navigating through immigration and customs in Amsterdam just to retrieve my checked bag, rechecking it with KLM, and navigating the busy Schiphol airport to clear security again began to dawn on me. Boy, I was mistaken. It wasn't over. There was more to come. When I stepped out of the plane, I noticed an individual holding an iPad displaying my name on it. She welcomed me to Amsterdam and guided me down a staircase to the tarmac where we strolled over to a Mercedes-Benz parked right next to the mighty Boeing 777. She escorted me to the Skiport VIP Center, which is essentially a private VIP lounge inside the airport. I didn't even know such a facility existed. Before I could mention my check bag, she informed me, Sir, once I accompany you to the lounge, I will retrieve your check bag from baggage claim, recheck in with KLM, and bring you the back tag. I was caught off guard and actually pleasantly amused. What on earth is going on? Did Garuda Indonesia mistake me for a prince or something? I decided to just not think about anything and relish the moment. I had to practically twist my own arm to indulge in a second breakfast, complete with coffee and mimosas, all while lounging in the flower room. While in the lounge, I happened to check out the pricing for the ski pole VIP lounge. It turns out the rate for the transfer service was 835 euros, offering pickup upon arrival on airside, three hours in the VIP lounge, and a drop off at the departing aircraft. Wow, I'm speechless. My KLM reservation was no way linked to the Garuda Indonesia booking. It was a completely separate reservation. Garuda Indonesia could have easily said goodbye the moment I stepped out of the plane in Amsterdam but they went above and beyond to take care of a valued customer. If this is an exceptional service, what is? Here's a list of all the first class flights I've flown so far. Each airline on this list possesses its own strengths. In the case of Garuda Indonesia, their standout quality lies in the exceptional service provided by their crew. If I have to nitpick on a few things, here's a small list. A physical menu could have been nice in the first class lounge. The taste of authentic Indonesian food items can be improved. I'm only saying this because I was spoiled by all the amazing food I had at St. Regis the previous day. The in-flight entertainment options were very limited. Would have loved to see a nice spread. But guess what? The amazing service from check-in in Jakarta to departure from Amsterdam overshadowed any minor hiccups and left me as a content and delighted customer. Well done, Garuda Indonesia. If you liked this video, please hit the like button and please feel free to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.